Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I continue to experiment with the Orion Carrier Plane and the Mini Star, rebalancing the fuels in the Mini Star and the Orion Carrier Plane in order to try to make sure that the Orion Carrier Plane can land in the Bahamas while we still get the Mini Star to orbit and we're doing both of these on the same launch. Right. We are going to switch from the Mini Star directly to the Orion Carrier Plane in order to recover it and in order to do that we have an extra engine on the Mini Star that we wouldn't otherwise need. We have three engines instead of two and that will allow the Mini Star to get into orbit quickly enough so that we can turn back to the Orion Carrier Plane to land it. Previously we got close to the landing location in the Bahamas but it didn't quite make it and so as a result I decided to try to increase the thrust to weight ratio and decrease the amount of fuel in the Orion carrier plane uh, so that it would get through the atmosphere quicker and have less drag but actually we didn't reach the required speed and so I decided to go the other way with it and actually increase the amount of fuel and decrease the thrust to weight ratio so we lift off slower here and we're going to have more drag well we're going to have more time in the thicker part of the atmosphere but maybe by going slower we get less drag and so it's a toss-up whether we lose more delta v to drag by going slower or whether going slow is better because we're not trying to fight against so much dynamic pressure so much velocity against the atmosphere so here we had more fuel and less thrust weight ratio and as a result we did get to the required speed and I switched to the Orion carry plane here in order to kill rotation and the Mini Star continued to orbit. Once again the payload is 40 tons on that particular mount on the front of the Mini Star and here the script is making orbit and I get ready to switch back to the Orion carry plane very quickly. I did switch outside of the atmosphere, but I've cut out the long glide into the atmosphere to highlight the more dramatic part here, and especially the part where the air brakes blow up. I didn't modify the air brakes yet, and so they still had the heat tolerance that they had before, and that was to 175 degrees Celsius, or 448 Kelvin, which I felt was a little bit low. So Ultimately, I'll decide to change it from the aluminum material configuration in Realism Overhaul to the steel uh, configuration, though I feel like there ought to be something else. But anyway, uh, that will be the way to fix that, the air brakes blowing up. And we will see as I do manage to sort of get over to the Palmas with a little bit of a boost from the engines using up the remaining fuel once we get the fuel settled down. Uh, I do get it to the runway here, but uh, I can't really slow down very effectively without the air brakes. So that is a problem. But there's the runway. We are going very fast. 214 meters per second, which is more than 400 miles an hour. With most planes, I would try to do turns, S-turns, or some sort of braking turn in order to bleed off the speed here, but the Orion carry plane does not like that. It goes out of control very easily when you're not pointed right at prograde when it's this slow. When it's going faster it's alright, but it's got too small a wing to maintain a grip on the atmosphere if you turn it too hard. So that's why we're not doing so much of that. Try... but. Unfortunately, the drag chutes also decide not to come out. Maybe they're misconfigured or something. And so I'm just pulling up. Pulling up is one thing I can do. So, ah, ooh. Well, that was a rough one, but it survived that part. The problem is we can't slow down. I am pressing the brakes, but we need those air brakes. And of course, we used up a lot of the runway just trying to touchdown at a safe speed. The landing gear is not meant for more than about 150 meters per second. The collider on the runway is a little bit weird here. So yeah, they're sort of floating above. And then... Contact. And then of course we scrape the tail and everything. So close, but yeah. Ultimately I edit the air brakes in order to make them steal and then try again and we will see that. 
in this case, well, a lot of it's recoverable, but it's not good enough, darn it. So, trying it out with the steel air brakes this time. I forget if there was some more subtle rebalancing of the propellants. I don't think so. But we've got a lot of spare volume in the Orion carrier plane. It's definitely not using all of its volume. Neither is the Mini Star, incidentally. We could technically make both of them smaller, but the Orion carrier plane also has other loads that it might need to carry, except for the Mini Star. So we're optimizing it for the Mini Star in this case, but. We have to keep in mind its other purposes, including, of course, launching the Orion space plane from 2001 A Space Odyssey, its original purpose. Okay, so as it finishes the rollover, we see it reaching the required speed. And the script is told to do the shutdown and staging and all that at that speed. So if it doesn't reach that speed, it doesn't work. Unfortunately, I switched to the Orion carry plane a little bit too early. I should have waited until the Mini-Star finished the lighting of its engines, and now I have to bring the Mini Star to orbit myself instead of using the script, which I do. And actually, because I don't throttle down as much as the script does, I get it to orbit faster than the script does, so we turn back to the Orion carrier plane at a greater height. So here I am getting it to orbit, uh, somewhat less efficient maybe than the script did. Not too different, I don't think, though. And I turn back to like you know, to this at about 170 kilometers as opposed to 150 something. So here we go again, but this time with the more robust air brakes, steel, apparently. I did not decide to like put heat shielding on them. We could have done the LCC or whatever it is, or even HRSI tiles or something. But, nope, didn't decide to go that far. We might have to go that far if it's on a full space plane, though. We'll see. I think it's basically the conductivity of the body that's the problem. But anyway, they survived, so we're good for now. And here we're coming in. I'm waiting to use the engines to burn off the fuel we can't use, the propellant we can't use. And we can only really light the engines once we're below the speed of sound. Apparently that's when they get settled. It's probably more due to the atmosphere pushing on us a certain amount than the speed. But anyway, I use up that fuel. There is still some propellant left. Uh, those are the residuals, the infamous residuals. Okay, so armed with air brakes, can I land now? I didn't fix the dra drag chutes though. I do still need to fix the Bahamas terrain. Uh, it doesn't look quite as good in this version as it did previously. Uh, the quality of the height map is improved for real solar system and with the improved height map I have to improve this terrain as well. Okay. Well, we are certainly slower on touchdown. The air brakes are working. It's a big plane, and we do have touchdown. The parachutes aren't working, but I do manage to get it to come to a stop on the runway. So, good times with that, so we can do that part. Now, what about the recovery of the Mini Star? This needs to be a fully recoverable system, well, except for the payload mount. That part is not recoverable, but that's a small price to pay. It's basically like the hot staging ring on Super Heavy, I guess, which they also toss up, so toss off now. We'll call it about that. Okay, so here the Mini Star is bringing the payload into disposal situation, so we're getting rid of it. After having gotten into a one and a half hour orbit, as I normally do, I dispose of the payload and also dispose of the payload adapter, which is a separate thing, of course. So off that goes. All right, now the mini star is free, but instead of just following this trajectory, I get it back into orbit first and then run the script in order to do the deorbit properly. So the script is in control of the deorbit and you can see it picked a periapsis of negative six-ish kilometers and we have plenty of propellant left for the return so we can do 
a more complex mission with the Mini Star if necessary. It is attempting to return to Tampico. Most convenient thing to do, obviously. One other piece of the puzzle that I haven't worked on is bringing the Orion carrier plane back from the Bahamas to Tampico, right? It needs to come back for launch, and in theory, what we would need to do is fly it here somehow. Uh, I guess it should be fitted with jet engines for that. I've tested that sort of thing before, but uh, that could do with a retest. Things have changed, and it will need methane burning jet engines, of course. I'm of two minds of whether it should be permanently fitted with them or we can imagine a situation where they actually fit them when it needs to come back, but that would be very cumbersome, I think. But anyway, I don't know how easy it is to just throw a jet engine on something. But here, the script obviously uh, made us overshoot a bit. I turned it off and decided to turn manually here. But not too bad, all things considered, it just needs a little bit of refinement, and I was fairly confident I could get it back in. This is a heck of a turn to do though, at fairly high speeds. The main star is fairly easy to maneuver with, and it's good flying in general. It's not a wonderful glider, it's, it's a wedge, so it's got extra drag. It sort of holds itself in the atmosphere very well, unlike the Orion carrier plane, especially because its main wings are all moving, so it's got a lot of control authority, but it does get a little bit more drag. Here I'm using the OMS engines, basically to dump fuel. You can see we were still decelerating while using the engines, so they don't really push us very much in the atmosphere. That was more about lightening the load and improving our glide capabilities than actually pushing us forward. And here we go. Uh, incidentally, normally the Mini Star doesn't have a body flap down there. The aerospikes are expected to take care of their own heat. Um, uh, what you got, propellant is passed through them in order to keep them cool. But, and that would be how they operate anyway. But, because we put an extra one of them on the tail, that changed the balance of things, the center of mass had moved back, so I had to move the center of lift further back, and that's why we put I put the body flap there. The body flap's actually the same body flap on the Orion carrier plane. I just took the same one and put it on here. Okay, and... Touchdown, but unfortunately I did not put air brakes or drag chutes on this. And so, we have a little bit of trouble, and we also ultimately skid. I don't know about the landing gear, but probably I was trying to keep on the runway and just turn the front wheel too much or something. And, well, shucks. So, after that, I decided to put the air brakes on. We'll have to resize them. I took the air brakes off of the Orion carrier plane, so they're huge by comparison. So, anyway, as I tweak those... Well, it seems to work in general. It just needs a little bit of improvement, but I think we're back to being operational and we can carry 40 tons to orbit with this system and still say that both pieces are recoverable. And in fact, I can do the recovery without having FMRS or anything like that. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.